to the Gentiles, and glory for your people, Israel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord, Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There is also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer, And coming forward at that time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There are sometimes these strange or at least interesting admixtures of elements uh, within the liturgy, notably today, fire and water. Uh, which uh, we often say don't don't mix, and there was one point at the beginning of mass today in which we all had lighted candles, and then holy water was being sprinkled on us, and uh, I was wondering how many candles <coughs> might go out because of that, and uh, I was surprised. I don't, I don't think I didn't see any go out, um, so that's a good that's a good sign. The this mixture of fire and water is kind of like my mind with these liturgical anomalies when there's something new going on in the liturgy. I really don't know what's going on, and so I'm glad everything worked out. Nothing caught on fire. People's candles didn't go out, and so uh, so far so good. Um, but but these these elements of fire and water they also have 
significant symbolism uh, in our faith and in the history of the church and even in the history of the people of Israel. And we can also note that both of them uh, in nature have qualities that are life-giving and qualities that are destructive, that uh, we need water daily. Uh, well, we need water a lot, I don't, perhaps not daily, but we wouldn't be very comfortable without it daily. Fire gives us light and gives us warmth, but we also know the destructive power of fire. We know that water has the capacity over the course of uh, many years even to grind away stone, that there are riverbeds carved out by, simply by water. Um, so both of these elements have creative or life-giving properties. They also have uh, destructive or death-dealing properties. Um, they, have, uh, they also have these properties of purification as well. And purification perhaps is something that is uh, not explicit, uh, but important to our gospel reading today about the presentation of our Lord um, in the temple. It's, it's said explicitly regarding, uh, regarding Mary. This feast used to be called the purification of Mary. Um, but, uh, but, but there's also this purification that has been going on for a long time for certain people leading up, up to this feast day. Particularly, we, we might say, Simeon and Anna. That Simeon and Anna were in the temple uh, fasting and praying, that they were immersed in, in, the, in the Hebrew scriptures, that the, we could say the psalmody, the psalms, uh, were their daily fare, that they were seeking the Lord. Uh, and in the meantime, this life, this hidden life of prayer and fasting, of seeking every day to uh, allow the Lord to focus their hearts upon Him, uh, had a purifying effect over time. Their desire for the Lord, to see the Lord who had promised to show himself to them uh, grew over time. There was a carving out in their hearts of that which would present, prevent them from being able to see God. And we, we see that this is true because the temple to which Jesus as the infant comes is the fourth, the fourth temple. It's the um, third rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. And during the first three times that the temple was built, uh, the cloud of glory, uh, which was God's presence, which the Israelites had seen in the desert during the Exodus, came down and descended upon the temple so that all the people knew that God was present at his temple. When this fourth temple was built, that didn't happen. And so, um, so Simeon and Anna are not, not simply awaiting Christ, the Messiah, uh, perhaps in the way that we would understand that, but they were awaiting the Lord to come to bring his presence to the temple. And the fact that they recognized the Lord coming to bring his presence to the temple in, in the form of this tiny infant, rather than in this cloud of glory, as had been the case the, final, the, original, the first three times, gives us an insight into what has been going on uh, in their hearts over the, the past decades, the past decades in which they were seeking to live lives of righteousness and devoutness, lives of fasting and prayer, uh, clinging to staying close to the place where the Lord had promised he would come to be with them and the place in which he would fulfill his promise of revealing himself to them. Uh, certainly this was not probably very easy. I mean, decades were going by and they were not seeing the Lord in the way that he had promised. Um, we could even think of it in terms of Noah's building the ark and the derision that he received from others. That they really had, to, this was an exercise of their faith. This carving out of their hearts was a testing and purifying of their faith and of, uh, and of their um, desire to see the Lord itself, strengthening it, strengthening their desire to see him through his, through his delaying of his coming. Uh, this is the kind of purification uh, that Simeon and Anna received, and it enabled them to see, to be aware of, to notice that God, had, the Lord, had come to visit his temple when Mary and Joseph brought this infant to them. Uh, today in this Feast of the Presentation. This is the, the same, the same uh, clarity of, of heart that the Lord desires each of us to have as well, that we can so often go through every moment of our day not aware of the presence of the Lord, uh, but we know that God is present to each of us. He has come into our hearts and dwells there uh, by grace through the, through the sacraments of baptism and strengthened through confirmation and is strengthened every time we receive the, the sacraments. Um, we strengthen that relationship 
with him through prayer, through living and seeking to live in charity with one another, denying ourselves. Um, but so often we can, we can miss the Lord's presence. Uh, the Lord is present to us at every moment, including this moment, and especially at this moment, uh, within the context of the Mass, of which we are both present at the foot of Calvary and also present to the eternal liturgy of heaven, that already at this Mass, uh, if, we have, if our hearts have the eyes to see that uh, we have a glimpse of heaven, uh, though veiled. Uh, but this is this this uh, inner sight, this clarity of vision of the heart, is what the Lord desires each of us to have. By turning away from uh, that which is uh, which clouds the eye of our heart, namely sin and attachments to things, uh, and placing them, giving them greater value than God Himself, and He helps us with this often by the things that would happen to us uh, that are contrary to our will that test our faith, that uh, purge away our hearts, that cut ravines in the dross, the things that have glossed over the eye of our heart, uh, that can seem like punishment, that can seem like perhaps the Lord has abandoned us, but we know that the Lord does not abandon us, uh, that, 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 that this uh, process of purification, though often painful, uh, can in the end uh, re- give us the same result, or a similar result to that of Simeon and Anna, that we can see the Lord when he comes to us in the way in which he has chosen to come to us. We know also that the Lord comes to us uh, within the context of this Mass, uh, in the sacrament of his body and blood, in the Holy Eucharist, that it is truly God himself, divine love that we receive uh, when we receive Christ's body and blood today. And so as we prepare ourselves to receive Jesus, his uh, precious body and blood, Uh, In the Holy Eucharist, let us ask the intercession of Saints Simeon and Anna to help us to grow in trust in the Lord, that the uh, the trials that we may experience, that which is contrary to what we would hope would happen, that these could be opportunities to purify our hearts more deeply, to turn us away from sin and worldly attachments so that we can more clearly see God's presence in our lives, in one another, and in, um, in the course of our lives 